at pointly from the month of September, now G24. Now G24 was established in 1971 by a group of 77, has one of, it, of its chapters. Its mandate is to help coordinate the position of developing countries on international monetary and development finance issues, as well as to ensure that their interests are adequately represented in negotiations on international monetary matters. Now let's look at Nagorno-Karabakh region in Armenia-Azerbaijan conflict. Now Nagorno-Karabakh region is a disputed territory internationally recognized as part of Azerbaijan. However, it is governed by Republic of Artashk, de facto independent state with an Armenian ethnic majority, backed by Armenia. Now, the conflict over the region has led to three wars between the two countries. India has a friendship since 1995 with Armenia. Armenia supports India's stand on Kashmir. ONGC Gale have investments in Azerbaijan as well. Now, it falls on the international north-south transport and communication corridor route connecting India with Russia through Central Asia. However, Azerbaijan supports Pakistan on Kashmir issue. Now, India has taken a principled position in the conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan and supported its peaceful resolution. So, this is the region we are talking about that is Nagorno-Karabakh region. It lies between Azerbaijan and Armenia. On the east of Azerbaijan is Caspian Sea. On the west is the Armenia. Below lies Iran. On the top is Russia and Georgia. Now, moving on to Financial Intermediary Fund. A new fund named Financially Financial Intermediary Fund has been established for Pandemic Prevention, Preparedness and Response, that is PPR. Its purpose is to provide additional long-term financing to strengthen pandemic PPR capabilities like zoonotic disease surveillance, laboratories, emergency communication, co coordination and management, critical health workforce capabilities and community engagement in low and middle income countries and address critical gaps at national, regional and global level. The World Bank will serve as its trustee and hosts the secretariat of the fund with technical support from WHO. Now, the fund was developed with broad support from members of G20 and beyond. Now, moving on to Eastern Economic Forum. Now, Eastern Economic Forum is an international platform establishing and strengthening ties with Russian and global investment community. The objective is to support economic development of Russia's Far East region and to expand international cooperation in Asia-Pacific region. It was established by decree of Russian president in 2015. In accordance with the decree, the meeting of the forum takes place each year in Vladivostok, Russia. Now moving on to Lake Garda, that is in Italy. It is also known as Lake Binaco. It is largest lake in Italy. Drought in Italy has reduced Lake Garda to its near lowest level ever recorded. Now, lower snowfalls in early 2020 led to drying up of the largest river in Italy, that is Po. To provide water to farmers, authorities allowed withdrawal of water from Lake Garda. Now, low rainfall in July and August led to water levels falling from the low to the lowest level. The lake is an international tourist destination. Now, let's move on to Kushiyar River. Now, Kushiyar is a distributary river in Assam and Bangladesh. It forms on the India-Bangladesh border as branch of Barak River, when the Barak separates into Kushiyar and Sum Surma. The water of Kushiyar originates in Nagaland and picks up tributaries from Manipur, Mizoram and Assam. India and Bangladesh have signed an interim water sharing agreement for Kushiyar River. This is the first search pact between them in over 25 years. The Ganga Water Treaty was signed in 1996. Now this is the Kushiyar River, Surma River, Brahmaputra, India, Bangladesh and it is close to Dhaka as well. Now Chitkong would lie in the close vicinity of this river. Moving on new naval insignia. Now, the Prime Minister unveiled the new insignia, that is flag of the Indian Navy, at the launch of India's first indigenous aircraft carrier, that is INS Vikrant. This is the fourth time that naval insignia has been changed since 1950. A naval insignia is a flag that is installed atop naval warships, on ground stations, at air bases and other institutions used as form of maritime identification. Now, the St. George Cross, the St. George Cross, Red Cross has been removed. The new Indian flag Navy flag consists of national flag that is the tricolor. In the upper left can, canton, in the lower right corner of the fly side, there is an Indian national emblem with national motto Satyamiv Jayate, that is Ashok Stam, and uh, there is an anchor and Navy's motto that is Shanno Varuna, that is be auspicious unto us, O Varuna, inside a blue octagon. Now, the octagon depicts eight directions, symbolizing good fortune, eternity, renewal, draws positive energy from all directions. Now, the golden border of the octagon represents the Raj Mudra of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, the legendary 16th century Maratha warrior. He built a credible Navy fleet that earned admiration from European navies operating in the region at the time. 
Now moving on to exercise Kakadu. It is a multinational exercise hosted by the Royal Australian Navy. The exercise derives its name from Kakadu National Park, which is protected area in national Northern Territory of Australia. Around 14 countries participate in the exercise, including India. Moving on to exercise Vostok. It is a multilateral strategic uh, command exercise hosted by Russia. Participating countries include India, China, Belarus, Mongolia, Tajikistan, among others. From the Indian Army, Gorkha Rifles participated in the exercise. Now MH-60 Romeo Helicopters. India will procure 24 MH-60 Romeo Helicopters by 2025 as part of the 15,000 crore deal with the US government. Now MH-60R is an all-weather helicopter manufactured by Lockheed Martin Corporation of the United States. They are the US Navy's primary anti-submarine warfare and anti-surface weapon system for open ocean zones. Now the helicopters are designed to operate from frigates, destroyers, cruisers and aircraft carriers. Moving on to light combat helicopter, it is an Indian multi-role attack helicopter designated and manufactured by HAL that is Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. The LCH has been ordered by Indian Air Force and Army. It has several stealth features and has armor protection, night attack capability, crash worthy landing gear to give it better survivability. It is powered by two Shakti engines and has a maximum takeoff weight of 5800 kilograms. Moving on to FINSA. In SAS, it stands for Future Infantry Soldier as a System. It is a program for infantry modernization aimed at enhancing the operational capability of the soldier. Now, the soldiers are being equipped with modern systems which will be lightweight, all-weather, all-terrain, economical and require low maintenance. The full gear of F in SAS system includes AK-203 rifles, a multi-mode hand grenade, ballistic helmets and ballistic goggles for protection against small projectiles, a bulletproof vest, hands-free secured advanced communication set for real-time exchange of informations with command post and fellow soldiers for enhanced situational awareness. Moving on to Yuan Wang 5. Yuan Wang 5 is the third generation scientific research ship of Yuan Wang series owned by China. The ship can be used to monitor satellites, rockets, intercontinental ballistic missile launches. Now several experts have described it as a dual-use spy ship. The ship will be used by China to conduct satellite control and research tracking in the northwestern part of Indian Ocean region. The ship docked on Hanban Tota port in Sri Lanka and was opposed by India due to security reasons. Moving on to Dark Sky Reserves, a Dark Sky Reserve is a public or private land with distinguished nocturnal environment and starry nights that has been developed responsibly to prevent light pollution. A designated Dark Sky Reserve has policies in place to ensure that a tract of land or region has minimal artificial light interference. The International Dark Sky Association, a US-based non-profit designates places as international dark sky places, parks, sanctuaries and reserves depending on certain criteria. Moving on to dark sky reserve in Hanle, Ladakh, the Department of Social Science and Technology has announced the setting up of India's first dark reserve in Hanle, Ladakh. It will be situated in the Ch Changtang Wildlife Sanctuary. It will be developed by Indian Institute of At Astrophysics. The reserve will boost astro tourism in India and will be one of the world's highest located site for optical, infrared, gamma ray telescopes. Now, Hanle is best suited as it is located in Ladakh's cold desert region with clear sky and dry weather conditions throughout the year away from human disturbance. Moving on to Einstein's ring, the Einstein ring is created when light from a galaxy or star passes by massive objects en route to Earth. Due to the effect of gravitation called gravitational lensing, the light is diverted which makes it seem to come from different places. If the light source, lens and observer are in a perfect alignment, the light appears as a ring. The first example was discovered in 1988. James Webb Telescope recently discovered an Einstein ring formed from light from a distant galaxy 12 billion light years away from Earth which makes it one of the oldest galaxies in universe. Moving on to MOXIE, the Mars Oxygen, Mars oxygen in C2 resource utilization experiment. Now MOXIE is a small box sent by Massachusetts Institute of Technology with NASA's Perseverance rover. It has produced oxygen on Mars with components from planet's atmosphere. It in inhales carbon dioxide and exhales oxygen. Now carbon dioxide makes up 96% of the gas in Mars atmosphere. Oxygen is only 0.13%. MOXIE will help demonstrate a way that future explorers might produce oxygen for Martian atmosphere for propellant and for breathing. Moving on to talc based powders, talc that is hydrous magnesium silicate is the softest known mineral and is mined from underground deposits. It is used in cosmetic and personal care items like baby powder, lipstick etc. It absorbs moisture, reduces friction which keeps the skin dry and helps prevent rashes. Asbestos generally occurs near 
talc deposits and can contaminate it. Now asbestos is known to cause lung and ovarian cancers. Now pharmaceutical giant Johnson & Johnson has announced that it will discontinue the sale of its talc based baby powder globally by 2023. Moving on to Incovac, Bharat Biotech International Limited has announced that Incovac vaccine has received approval under restrictive use in emergency situations for ages 18 and above. It is an intranasal COVID-19 vaccine. It is recombinant, replication deficient, adenovirus vectored vaccine with profusion stabilized spike protein. It uses a modified chimpanzee adenovirus which cannot replicate in the body to carry COVID spike protein to induce immunity. It is non-invasive and needle feed vaccine and is easy to administer without the requirement of trained healthcare workers. Moving on to flue gas desulfurizations, the Ministry of Power has extended the deadline for coal-fired power plant to install flue gas desulfurization systems to cut sulfur emissions by two years. Now, FGD is a set of technologies used to remove sulfur dioxide from exhaust flue gases of fossil fuel power plants and other industrial units. Now, India is the top S sulfur dioxide emitter accounting for 21% of the global anthropogenic sulfur dioxide emissions. Now, thermal utilities account for 80% of the industrial emissions of sulfur and nitrous oxide, which causes lung diseases, acid rain, smog, FGD. Systems have proved successful in reducing emissions level in China. Moving on to Global Alliance for Industry Decarbonization, the International Renewable Energy Agencies, that is IRENA, and 13 companies across all industrial sec industry sectors have launched the Global Alliance for industry decarbonization. It aims to accelerate net zero ambition and decarbonization of industrial value chains in pursuit of the 2015 Paris Agreement climate change goals. It has been formed under the Bali Declaration of IRENA. From India, JSW and Tata General Steelworks and Tata Steel are part of the group. Moving on to Trees Outside Forest in India initiative, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and the US Agency for International Development, that is USAID, have announced the launch of this initiative. It aims to increase tree coverage outside of forest land in India to support global climate change mitigation and adaptation goals. The program will involve farmer companies and private institutions in India. It will be implemented by a consortium led by Center for International Forestry Research and World Agroforestry. The program will be implemented in seven states including Andhra Pradesh, Assam, Haryana, Odisha, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu and Uttar Pradesh. Moving on to hydrogen power trains in Germany. Now Germany has launched the world's first fleet of fully hydrogen power trains. The trains are powered by fuel cells and use hydrogen stored in tanks above the train coaches to produce electricity. Now this electricity is used to power electric motors to run the train. These trains are claimed as emission free trains that can reach speeds of 140 km per hour. Moving on to India Wind Energy Market Outlook 2026. Now, Global Wind Energy Council has launched the report. It observes that India has a, had a target of installing 60 gigawatts of wind power by 2022. However, only 60 gigawatts have been established. The installation rate has been slowing down since 2017 and only 1.45 gigawatts of wind power projects were installed in 2011. Annual installation of new wind power projects in India will peak by 2024 and likely decline thereafter. After 2024, fresh projects are likely to be wind-solar hybrid projects where both systems are installed on a piece of land to generate power throughout the day. Now moving on to zombie ice, according to a study, zombie ice from massive Greenland ice sheet will raise the global sea level by at least 10 inches. Zombie or doomed ice is ice that is still attached to thicker area of ice but is, but is no longer getting fed by the larger glacier. That is because the parent glacier are getting less replenishing snow. Without replenishment, the doomed ice is melting and will inevitably rise sea level. Now moving on to PFAs or forever chemicals, a study has found that rainforest rainwater from many places across the globe is contaminated with per and polyfluoroalkali substances. Per and polyfluoroalkali substances are called forever chemicals because their tendency to stick around in the atmosphere, rainwater and soil for long periods of time. Now PFAs are used to make non-stick cookware, water repellent clothing. The US Environmental Protection Agency lists a variety of health risks due to FPA exposures like decreased fertility, development effects in children, interference with body hormones and antibodies, increased cholesterol levels and increased risk of some cancers. Moving on to hunger stone, which is known as Hungerstein in Germany, in German, are a common hydrological marker in Central Europe, 
that date back to the pre-instrumental era, industrial era. These stones were embedded in two rivers by ancestors when rivers were subdued to severe le levels, subsequently causing famine and food shortages. Many of the Sanghar stones have unique carvings on them that seek to remind the next generation of impeding food shortages if water level falls to this level. Moving on to Tasmanian tiger, now scientists in USA and Australia have embarked on a project to resurrect the Tasmanian tiger with gene editing technology. Now Tasmanian tiger was a marsupial mammal that went extinct in 1930. Marsupial is a mammal of an order whose members are born incompletely developed and are typically carried and suckled in a pouch on mother's belly. It is a slow paced carnivorous that usually hunted alone or pairs in night. It had a dog-like head and eight kangaroos, other marsupial and small rodents and birds. Moving on to trophic downgrading. It is the casual downgradation, degradation of an ecosystem that occurs when higher trophic levels of orga animals are removed from the food chain, resulting in loss or exponential growth of other species. Now, trophic downgrading also results in disruption of biogeochemical cycles, wildfires, growth of invasive species, and carbon sequestration, among other effects. Extinction of Tasmanian tiger caused trophic downgrading in Tasmanian ecosystem. Moving on to de-extinction, that is resurrection biology. De-extinction is the method of creating a species that went extinct or is endangered in order to revitalize ecological diversity. Now, cloning is the most widely used method of de-extinction. Genome editing and selective breeding are also considered effective ways. The Pyrian ibex subspecies of Spanish ibex was one of the first extinct species that have been resurrected using somatic cell nuclear transfer, even though the baby ibex died minutes after its birth from a lung defect. Moving on to whale, whale shark, the whale shark is the largest fish on earth and is a keystone species in marine ecosystem. It can grow to a length of approximately 18 meters and weigh as much as 21 tons. They are ovipare. They are ovoviviporous, which means producing young by means of eggs which are hatched within the body of the parent and can reach sexual maturity at around 10 years old. Its IUCN status is endangered and falls under Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. It is distributed widely across tropical and warm temperature seas. The whale shark is distributed all along the Indian coast. However, the largest whale shark aggregation is along the Gujarat coast. Moving on to Save the Whale Shark campaign, now Wildlife Trust of India has launched the Save the Whale Shark campaign along Karnataka, Kerala and Lakshadweep. It aims to reduce and eradicate whale shark deaths in incidental catch in fishing nets by voluntary release of whale shark. The main threat to whale shark is accidental entanglement in fishing nets. This can result in mortality. Moving on to snailfish, now snailfish also known as sea snails are found in oceans worldwide but they are strictly found in cold waters meaning that species of tropical and subtropical region strictly are deep water. The snailfish releases biofluorescence which allows it to glow green and red in dark arctic water. Snailfish are the only polar fish reported to have biofluorescence. Now scientists have found a snailfish in iceberg habitat in Greenland that can survive in icy arctic water due to presence of antifreeze protein in their bloodstream. Moving on to Megalodon. Now Megalodon means big tooth is an extinct species of Markel sharks that live approximately 23 to 3.6 million years ago from the early Miocene to Pliocene epoch. It was 50 feet long. It was a fast swimmer and could migrate across global oceans with ease. It could weigh up to 70 tons. Moving on to Mudhol hounds, it is, a, it is a breed of hunting dogs native to North Karnataka. The breed could soon be inducted into special protection group. It is named after erstwhile princely state of Mudhol. It is also known as Mar Maratha hound, Pashmi hound, Khatwar dog and Kraven hound. They are believed to have been bred first by Raja Malochi Rao Gopade of Mudhol. The, bred, the breed is already serving the Indian army. The dog have athletic legs and an elongated skull and 270 degree vision and a sharp sense of smell. They also have swift runners and possess great stamina, hence they are ideal for hunting, garden and surveillance.
Now moving on to Lumpy Pro Vac Int vaccine for lumpy skin disease. It is an indigenously developed vaccine against the lumpy skin disease virus. It has been developed by ICAR's National Research Center on Equines, Hisar, Haryana, and the Indian Veterinary Research Institute at Izzat Nagar, UP. It is a live attenuated vaccine similar to those used against tuberculosis, measles, mumps, and rubella. This vaccine provides 100% protection against lumpy skin disease in cattle. Moving on to BPAL. Now, BPAL is a six month or oral three drug regime that is used to treat people with highly drug resistant form of TB. Now, it has been developed by TB Alliance, a not for profit organization. It is a combination of three newer antibiotics, namely betaquinin, pretomanid, and linzoid. Drug resistant TB develops when long complex decades old TB drug regime is improperly administered or when people contract TB from others who have drug resistant disease. Now moving on to Majma Ul Bahrain. Now Majma Ul Bahrain that is Confluence of Two Seas or The Mingling of Two Oceans is a book on comparative religion authored by Mughal prince Dara Sikhoi. The book throws invaluable light on the similarities between the religions and helps bring stronger unity among the people of India. In the book, Dara Sukhoi listed one by one all the commonalities between Hinduism, that is Vedant, and Islam, that is Sufism, and came to the conclusion that the difference between Islam and Hinduism is only verbal. The vice president has released Arabic version of Majmayul Bahrain recently. Now moving on to Anabhau Sate, he was born as Thukaram Bhaurao Sate in 1920 in Maharashtra. He participated in Chadwar Lake Satyagra at Mahad. He formed several activist groups like Dalit Yuvak Sangh, Lal Bhavatak Kala Pathak and worked on issues related to caste atrocities, class conflict, workers' right. His notable literary works include Fakira, Marathi novel published in 1959, Banglachi Hak, that is Bengal's call on the Bengal famine and some more. Moving on to Pandurg. Khan Khoj. Now, Pandur Khan Khoj was an Indian revolutionary, scholar, and agricultural scientist. He was the founding member of Ghadar Party. He had joined Mount Tamlapis Military Academy in US, where he came in contact with many Mexicans. He had also met with Lenin in Russia to seek support for India's cause. Later, he was appointed as a professor at National School of Agriculture in Mexico. He was part of the effort to bring in Green Revolution in Mexico. Now, the Speaker of Lok Sabha recently unveiled statues of Swami Vivekananda and Pandurang Khan Khoj in Mexico. Moving on to Arthupuza Vilyoudha Panikar. He was a social reformer from Izvaha community in Kerala. He was given the title of Panikar by the then King of Travancore in 9 1869. He built two temples dedicated to God Shiva in which members of all castes and religions were allowed entry. In 1858, he led the Achi Pudava Samaran strike in Alapuza aimed to earn women belonging to oppressed group groups the right to wear a lower garment that extended beyond the knees. In 1860s, he led the Muktvi Samram for the right of lower caste women to wear gold ornaments. He also established Kathakali Yogam, area-based schools for classical dance form Kathakali from the Izvaha community in 1861. Moving on to GI tag to Mithila Makana, the government of India has awarded the GI tag to Mithila Makana. It is a special variety of aquatic cash fruit crop cultivated in Mithila region of Bihar. It is an auspicious ingredient in offerings to the god and goddesses during festival and is used to show reverence. Its geographical area of population is in 21 out of the 38 districts mostly situated in north of Bihar states like Dharpanga, Muzaffarpur, Champaran, Begusarai, Madhubani, Katiar, among many others. Moving on to Shamang Lee, Leela. It is a traditional form of theatre in Manipur. The theatre is arranged in the form of open air from four sides. In this, role of female artists are all played by male actors and male characters are played by female artists. The present day Shamang Leela addresses the issues of moral values, unity and integrity. In 2017, Shaugrak Pam, 
Himanta was conferred the prestigious Sangeet Natak Academy Award in recognition of his contribution to Shomang Leela. Now moving on to Legal Aid Defense Council system, it has been launched by National Legal Services Authority that is NALSA. Its purpose is to provide free legal aid to poor people facing criminal cases to defend themselves during trial. Moving on to Crime Act portal, it was launched in 2020 by Ministry of Home Affairs. It aims to share information on crimes and criminals on a 24x7 basis with various law enforcement agencies and ensure a seamless flow of information among them. The application is run by National Crimes Bureau Records Bureau. It facilitates the dissemination of information about significant crimes including human trafficking across the country on real-time basis and enables interstate coordination. Now forensic probe. Now Delhi police has become the first police force in the country to make collection of forensic evidence mandatory in crimes punishable by more than six years. The objective is to boost the conviction rate and integrate criminal judicial justice system with forensic science investigation. A forensic mobile van shall be allotted to each district. These vans will be independent entities responsible to court of law and not under the administrative control of the city police. Now moving on to Nidan portal. Now Nidan portal that is national integrated database on arrested narco offenders portal has been made operational for use by various union and state prosecution agencies tasked to enforce anti-drug laws. It has developed, it has been developed by the Narcotics Control Bureau. Nidan hosts data about those accused who have been arrested and jailed for drug offenses and those who have directly or indirectly involved to produce, manufacture, import, export any narcotic psychotropic substance. Moving on to Palan 1000 campaign, the Union Ministry of State for Health has launched the Palan 1000 national campaign and parenting app to reduce child mortality. The campaign focuses on cognitive development of children in the first two years of their life. The app will provide practical advice to caregivers. The campaign is aligned with the mission of Rashtri Bal Swastha Karikram, which emphasizes responsive care and focused interventions during the first 1000 days of a child. Moving on to Manthan platform, the Office of Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India has announced the launch of Manthan platform. It is a platform to promote collaboration between industry and the scientific research and development ecosystem to meet India's scientific mission. The platform will facilitate knowledge transfer and interaction. The platform is powered by NSEIT. NSEIT is 100% subsidiary of National Stock Exchange of India. It is global technology enterprise that offers a range of digital data analytics, automation, cyber security and technology enabled services. Now moving on to Bal Aadhaar. It is a blue collared variant of Aadhaar card. It is issued for children below 5 years. Now biometrics are not collected for Bal Aadhaar. A facial image of child is taken for enrollment. Biometric authentication of the parent guardian is collected at the time of enrollment. At the age of 5, biometrics are furnished to complete the mandatory biometric update. Now over 7.9 million children have aged up to 5 years were unro enrolled under the Unique Identification Authority's Bal Aadhaar Bal Aadhaar initiative from April to July. Now Roshni Saline, saline Water Lanterns, it is India's first saline water lanterns which uses seawater as electrolyte between specially designed electrodes to power the LED lamps. It has been developed by National Institute of Ocean Technology. Normal water mixed with salt can also be used to power the lantern. It is cost effective and easy to operate and will benefit poor communities. Moving on to Har Ghar Jal Certification, now Goa and Dadar and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu became the first Har Ghar Jal Certified States and Union Territory in the country respectively. Now Jal Jeevan Mission is a flagship program of Government of India launched in 2019. Its aim is to make provisions of portable water supply in adequate quantity of prescribed quality and on regular and long term basis to every rural household of the country by 2024. Now moving on to Super Vasuki, the Indian Railways recently conducted a test run of train called Super Vasuki. It is a 3.5 km long freight train. It is the longest and heaviest freight train that the railway has ever operated. The train gets its name from Vasuki, the Hindu god of serpents. Shiva's snake Vasuki is portrayed as being around his neck. The train was run by the South East Central Railway. Now moving on to Setu initiative, Setu initiative would connect startups in India to US based investors and startup ecosystem leaders with mentorship assistance in various areas including funding, 
market access and commercialization its aim is to break break geographical barriers between mentors based in us that are willing to invest in entrepreneurship and sunrise startups in india now moving on to kerala sarvi kerala has launched kerala savari savari the savari the country's first online taxi service owned by state government its aim is to ensure fair and decent service to passengers along with fair remuneration to auto taxi workers it is several it has several features like no surge pricing safety features for women low service charge and panic button for security help it